Hello everybody, I'm making this video as recently I've found a very elegant way of using Krita's brush engine to place lots of objects in an easy and controllable way. I'll talk about making some really specific brush tips, often just for creation of a single artwork, but this technique could speed up your rendering process even if you will use this brush just once. So let's see how to make it. I created a new document where I started drawing an object I want to use as an asset. In this example, it will be a rooftop tile. I'm drawing it on a separate layer using only gray colors. That's because this image will be colored with a color we select in a normal way from the color wheel. I also have a non-gray background to help me differentiate low opacity areas from the gray ones. To make it really work, we need at least three or four of those tiles. That should let us avoid the common problem of a stamp brush, which is looking repetitive. You can see how I'm temporarily bringing opacity down and switching to the previous object, as all of our rooftop tiles need to have similar color range and be roughly the same size. It's also okay to duplicate an object and draw over it to maintain the style and all of its properties. Try to achieve this balance between similar style and differences in shapes and detail. In this tutorial I painted all of the assets, but of course you can get them with any other way. I'm sure that if you remove the backgrounds from the desaturated stock images or photos you took, you could create some really easy to use object libraries. It seems like a useful thing for concept art for example. Once I finished drawing all of the tiles and made some tweaks to make them look good as a pack, I started to add shadows beneath each of them. I found it really important to have those dropped shadows under each asset, as it will look way more realistic at the end and save you a ton of time later on adding it manually to each object. I also noticed that they need to be painted in pure black with low opacity. Grey with higher opacity will look ok for now, but once you load those tiles to brush engine, those shadows will get colored quite awfully. Each object needs to get merged with its shadow, as we need all of them to be on one layer each. Hide the background and all the backup layers and make sure that all your tiles are ungrouped and visible. Then hit export just as you would save your artwork to PNG, but instead that pick the GIH extension. This will save the whole image as a brush, but without merging our objects. Kind of like your usual working document. Now the appearing dialog is also an important step. Remember to pick a meaningful name to be able to easily find it later. The option Create Mask from Color must be checked, as otherwise all those grayscale colors will get lost, and we definitely don't want that. Brush style has to be set to animated. That means we want to keep those layers without merging and use each layer as a separate brush. And we must fill the rank field with the correct number of our objects. I got 4 in this example. I think the random selection mode is the most useful in the majority of cases, but you can experiment with others a bit later. I'll leave some links to documentation that tells what those dimensions and selection modes are. We don't really need them in this video, but it's an interesting read overall. In the next step we need to import the brush back to Krita. I opened the new document for testing the brush and picked one of the stamp brush presets. Though, I don't think that it matters that much which brush you pick, as we'll be changing it a lot. Just pick any preset that belongs to the pixel engine, otherwise you will see other settings than I do. Now I'm heading to the brush editor and I hope you've been here already. But even if you didn't, I guess I'll show this clearly enough for you to keep up. In brush tip, predefined, we need to click the import button and pick the GIH file you exported earlier. It should appear at the bottom of the list, but on Krita Resta we will place alphabetically. As you can see, we already can draw with our tiles that appear in random order, though they have their original grayscale colors and the spacing and the rest of the settings I were off. The magic starts to happen when we change the brush mode to lightness map. In this mode, Krita treats the grayscale image of a brush as a map of light and dark areas for a color you've chosen on a color selector. 
Now let's deal with all the remaining settings to bring enough variety to the brush and basically make it as useful as it can be. If you feel confident with the brush engine in Krita, you can probably skip this part. But if you haven't spent much time here, maybe this will help you a bit. In our example, opacity settings should be turned off, as in this type of stamp brushes, semi-transparent objects don't make any sense. Size can be a bit more useful. I'll move that left control point much higher, so that the size of our objects can get between around 70 to 100% of the selected value, the one you set when you press shift while drawing. And I don't want that to be controlled with pen pressure, but to be fully random for each rooftop tile we place. This should give us some variety to start with. I noticed that our tiles land too close to each other, so I made the spacing bigger. You can also uncheck the auto checkbox, as then the spacing would be fitting regardless of the size of the brush. Next, we have a setting called Ratio. It's similar to size. It controls how squashed a single tile can get. Once again, I think that making it random will work great, bringing variety. The range starting from zero is way too much, so some value around 70 or 80% of the original proportions will be just fine. Now let's play with some colors. Hue and value settings make it possible to control the color you picked, making some slight changes to it. Value is the most important, as it tells how dark or light is the tile. Let's make it between 0, which is no changes to the original color, and minus 13%, something quite darker than that. Hue, on the other hand, is just the angle on a color wheel. 0 is once again the original hue, while making it positive or negative, the brush will use a hue on the left or right of the original one. In our example, lightness strength won't be too useful, as it tells how much contrast should our tiles have but you can find it very useful when you create your own brushes. Now we need to make sure that the picked color matches the overall color of the brush. In my example, it appears that the gray color I used while drawing the tiles wasn't 50% darkness, and I ended up with something darker than that. Luckily, no need to make changes to my objects, as I can adjust the neutral point to quickly fix this. Some brush tips may require changes to the rotation of the brush. If your tablet supports tilt, you'll probably want to connect rotation to tilt direction, giving you a lot of control over it with your pen. The angle setting in the brush tip options will let you adjust the offset so that the most used angle is achieved with your hand in the neutral position. Of course, depending on the brush, you may want to use other options for rotation. You probably know how to use Fuzzy Dub by now. It can be very useful both for full randomness of the brush tip, as well as for applying only a small variation. When you're done, make sure to save your brush preset, give it a name and draw a fast icon. Ok, so now, when you know how to make your own animated assets, here are some tips on how to actually use them. One thing to be aware of is that you hardly ever make a perfect brush tip at the first try. There are just too many things to handle, and as you cannot easily check how the brush works in practice, it's very likely that at least some of those objects won't look well enough when scaled down, won't fit the rest of the group, or will have inappropriate contrast. That's why I really advise you to save your file as a Krita document first, before exporting to GIH. This way, you can always have some backups on invisible layers, adjust contrast with curves, correct shadows, paint over objects to fix your mistakes, or even delete those that won't work well enough. The GIH format also allows you to open it with Krita and keep the layers stuck, but the invisible layers will be lost. Each time you make those changes, you'll have to import the tip once again and set it to lightness mode. That's a bit sad it won't use it as a default for the brush tip with preserved alpha, but it isn't that of a problem, honestly. Second thing is that the effect of this type of brush can look a bit artificial even if you make multiple objects. Basically, you need to be aware that unless you use those stamps in single details, you'll probably have to paint over the whole area at the end. Similarly, like painting over a rough 3D render. You just can't rely exclusively on this trick. Shadows, the layer on a multiply mode and some additional details 
can be really helpful in making it all look finished. Finally, I would advise you to try to reuse those brush tips as much as possible. Often, simply changing the color or brush size makes it enough to use the tip for something more than you originally planned. The same goes to overpainted areas. You can always transform and change the hue of some part of your painting to save time on rendering. Now, let's talk a bit about some other possible uses of this technique. In this tutorial, we only played with objects picked by random. But when you export a brush, you can pick another mode of selecting the tip. Instead of placing them randomly, you could choose them one after the other, or use pressure or drawing angle to decide which object the brush engine should use. And luckily, at this point, the frame of the animated brush is not a usual brush engine output that you could connect to any sensor and control the curve. And I missed that opportunity a little bit. But the available system that originated from GIMP is still mostly enough in practice. Using this technique as stamps that get scattered with big spacing is probably the main use case of those animated brush tips. But you could also try to use those as a regular brush for painting, with a very low spacing and the frame being controlled with pressure. That would give you the control of how exactly the brush looks like on different levels of pressure, changing its shape and lightness areas exactly as you designed them. The problem with this approach is that currently it works very slowly in Krita 4. But I've noticed a huge performance boost of animated brushes in pre-alpha version of Krita 5. So if you're seeing this video in the future and Krita 5 is already out, you could definitely try that and check how well it works for the super complex animated brush tips. And I guess that's all I wanted to show you today. I hope you'll find this feature useful in your workflow or you will find some new cool ideas and possibilities with it. You can download those brushes I showed in a video for free using the link in the description, but the whole point of this video is to teach you how to use that feature, so treat it more like a template and example. Each artwork requires assets drawn in your style, and this feature just makes it way easier to place the drawn items with the brush engine instead of copying, pasting, transforming and adjusting curves. Remember to click the thumb down if you didn't like this video, Subscribing is cool, though not very useful, as if you watch all of my videos, YouTube should recommend the next ones if they come out anyway. And the bell button and its notifications are just annoying and stupid, and I never use those myself to be honest. But I read all the comments and answer them, so feel free to leave one. See ya!